Hi, I'm Amanda and I am a grocery store worker. You may have come to have a new appreciation for your local grocery store. I know everyone who has worked at one has. We have worked through the craziest times in recent history and we've rocked it. I am an assistant bakery manager at one of the busiest grocery stores in Hamilton. I'm a union steward and I give it my all when I advocate for members. I have had a new appreciation for my career over the past year and when the pandemic hit, I suddenly realized how important the ordering of bread became and managing the production of cookies and pizza dough. We were essential overnight. Now that families were forced to stay home together, people were cooking and baking together. Going back to basics, people were bonding over their dinner table and breaking bread together. Grocery shopping was the one thing people had that was a small dose of normalcy. We the workers took pride in knowing that we were connected to our communities in a fundamental way. Many co-workers changed apartments or switched to night shift for the ever-growing changing needs of the business, including PC Express orders or stocking the shelves at night for the next morning. Workers had to adjust to daily changing safety protocols, which included sanitizing the stores and buggies and social distancing uh, at work. We were in charge of keeping our food supply chain safe, clean, and efficient for employees and customers. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, everyone had to adjust the schools being shut down. For my family, we had to ask my parents for help, which they did willingly so my husband and I could both work as we were both deemed essential. We, were, we used to joke about having recession-proof jobs, but as we discovered in these tough situations, that more is required of you. My son, who has special needs, took time to adjust. I would drive up to Fort Erie on Mondays, leave Tuesday mornings, and then go pick him up after work on Thursdays. I worked Wednesday to Sunday, and my husband worked Monday to Friday, we made it work. My son got to develop a bond with my parents and his cousins. He got to go play outside, spend time with my Oma, go swimming and have a good summer. I had a great summer outside, spending it with friends and family. We got to explore our city a little more and our province and realized what a beautiful place we call home. New protocols, processes, and work routines made it feel like we could get through this pandemic together. We were hopeful. Our communities started recognizing us and came into the stores and thanked us. Members of government thanked us publicly, and then our companies started thanking us. Fortinos started giving out free grocery coupons for every shift that we came into work. And then Loblaws stepped up and announced pandemic pay for all their employees, which set the standards for all grocery stores and most companies followed suit. We worked together to make sure families could shop in a safe environment. We had never felt more connected to our customers and appreciated through our employment. We were recognized as hardworking heroes, and I guess we always were. Studies have shown that the most vulnerable during this pandemic were women, more specifically working mothers. Mothers took the roles of caregivers and teachers and many of us still found a way to work either at home or with flexible hours. Many of our jobs were deemed essential as nurses, teachers, grocery workers or PSWs. We are the majority in the industries that were deemed essential for public health. What we need now is 100% paid maternity leave. When women get pregnant and have a baby, they are asked to survive on 55% of their pay. When the reality is, most of us are just surviving on 100% of our pay. These policies create financial stress on women and families, and it penalizes procreation. In order to break these barriers, we need to be valued at the same rate we were being paid before we got pregnant. After we get back from 100% paid maternity leave, we need publicly funded daycare and employers willing to accommodate the hours of daycare, allowing families to set a semi-set schedule 
with, that builds routine for families because we know that kids thrive with routines. We also need better paid provisions, which means we need paid sick days. We also need caregiving hours for kids who get sick and need to stay home from school or daycare and or if they have doctor's appointments. These paid provisions will have an immediate effect on women and recognize a mother's worth. My words of encouragement are to be kind to each other and to yourselves. If we work together and vote our interests, we can have 100% paid maternity leave. We can have affordable daycare and we can ensure all workers get paid a living wage and that nobody gets left behind. We are 50% of the population and when we organize and use our collective power together, it is a win for us and our families.